I would like to acknowledge the presence, uh, virtual presence of uh, Senator Amy Marcos, ma'am. And uh, other members of the Committee of, on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs. This morning, we are going to tackle Senate Resolution Number 811 on the alleged sale of AK-47 rifles to an unscrupulous uh, businessman that uh, eventually landed in the hands of the members of the New People's Army with aid of some PNP officials filed by this uh, representation. May I request our committee secretary to please uh, acknowledge our resource persons present today? Thank you, sir. We would like to acknowledge the physical presence of the following members and officers of the Philippine National Police. Uh, Police Major General Albert Ignatius D. Ferro. Good morning, sir. Police Brigadier General Sig Sidney N. Villaflor. So, sir. Good morning, sir. Police Brigadier General Romil M. Mitra, FEO. Good morning, sir. Police Colonel Ronald G. Hippolito, CI Investigation Division, CIDG, sir. Good morning, sir. Police Lieutenant Colonel Gerald G. Prieto, uh, Servicing Legal Officer, CIDG. Good morning, sir. Police uh, Lieutenant mm -hmm. Colonel Alfred Austria Jr. Morning, sir. Police Major Mar Joseph B. Rabello. Sir. And also together with them is Police Colonel Noel B. Ponoliera and Police Staff Sergeant Hazel Tantos. For the virtual attendees, sir, uh, we would also like to uh, recognize the virtual presence from the DOJ, uh, Attorney Don Rick C. Ventura. Morning, sir. From the National Bureau of Investigation, uh, we would like to recognize the virtual presence of Mr. Jose Dandy Santos, Attorney Alice Aukit Ban Egg. And Attorney Alice Aukit Van Egg. And we would also like to recognize the virtual presence from the Philippine, continuing from the Philippine National Police, sir. Uh, not necessarily according to rank or order, sir, but based on the uh, list that I have, sir. Police uh, Brigadier General Ulysses Cruz. Morning, sir. Police Brigadier General Dominic T. Bedia. Here are also the following officers who are virtually present, sir. Uh, Police Director Hill Meneses, former C Chief of CI, uh, Chief of CSG. Police Director Napoleon Estillas. Uh, Police Superintendent Raul Delfin Petrasanta. Uh, Police Superintendent Nelson Bautista. Police Lieutenant Colonel Maharlika Oscar Villasis. Police Lieutenant Colonel Mary Ann Alisdan. Police Lieutenant Colonel Jean Ibarra de la Torre. Police, Lieutenant Colonel Charlie Vete. Police, Chief Inspector Ricardo Zapata. Police, Lieutenant Colonel Cherry Lu Donato. Police, uh, Inspector, Chief Inspector Rodrigo Benedicto Sarmiento. Police, Chief Inspector Ricky C. Sumalde. Uh, NUP Marilu Discaya. We would also yes. like, yes, we would Present. like, yes, thank you. We would like to inform the body, sir, that we have also invited the other guests, but uh, to no avail, sir, we couldn't uh, get contact with them, sir. 
we would also like to acknowledge the virtual presence of Mayor Benjamin B. Magalong in his capacity as Chief of the CIDG before, sir. We would also Good morning, like, sir. Good morning. We would also like to recognize the virtual presence of Mr. Servando U. Casio, the former general manager of the Twin Pines Incorporated, sir. That's all, sir. Again, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Kumsek. Again, uh, good morning sa ating lahat. Lahat ng mga physically present at uh, virtually present. Lalong lalo na kay Mayor Benji Magalong na uh, we are stealing uh, his precious time from his uh, duties as Mayor of uh, Baguio City. Anyway, sir, uh, unahin kita mamaya, sir, para makapagtrabaho ka na dyan. Uh, please uh, bear with us. Uh, salamat, sir, for your presence. Again, uh, good morning everyone. In 2014, a news broke regarding the 1,004 missing high-powered firearms per PNP inventory that was later on reported to have been found in the position of NPA rebels. Pitong tao na ang nakalipas. Ano na nga ba ang nangyari sa issue na ito? May napanagot na ba dahil sa pangyayari ito? Ano ang naging aksyon ng ating kapulisan dahil sa nangyaring ito? The issue surrounding the case at hand does not simply concern the loss of firearms. The most disturbing and alarming part is the circumvention of our laws and regulations by unscrupulous persons in order to abet communist rebels and enemies of the state by providing and selling these high-powered firearms. I spent most of the early years of my career as a lieutenant in the Philippine Constabulary. I had first-hand experience in fighting against the communist terrorists in this country. Many police officers, military personnel, and innocent civilians have been killed in the hands of this communist terrorist group. This is, this is why I myself cannot tolerate and condone the alleged selling of rifles to this group. Hindi ko talaga matanggap na nagamit ang ating kapulisan upang magkaroon ng armas ang mga komunista na maaari pang magamit at makapatay sa maraming inusinting Pilipino. I hope that through this committee, we can trace out all the points surrounding the issues involved Asserted, ascertain the loopholes in our current firearms laws and regulations with the end goal of amending and strengthening the same. I would like to emphasize that the committee is fully aware of the criminal cases pending under the Sandigan Bayan regarding the issue at bar. Nonetheless, we are also fully cognizant of the congressional power of inquiry of the Senate enshrined under Section 21, Article 6 of the 1987 Constitution to wit, the Senate or the House of Representatives or any of its respective committees may conduct inquiries in aid of legislation in accordance with its duly published rules and procedures. The rights of persons appearing or affected by such inquiries shall be respected. The Supreme Court have made it clear in the landmark case of Arnold v. Nazareno, JR number L3820, July 18, 1950, that the power of inquiry with process to enforce it is an essential and appropriate auxiliary to the legislative function. A legislative body cannot legislate wisely or effectively in the absence of information respecting the conditions which the legislation is intended to affect or change, and where the legislative body does not itself possess the requisite information, which is not frequently true, recourse must be had to others who possess it. Before I continue, I would like to recognize, acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator Tol Tolentino. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
uh, we'll be attending later also after this. Furthermore, in the case versus Senate versus Ermita, GR number 169777, 20 April 2006, it was held that Congress undoubtedly has a right to information from the executive branch whenever it sought, whenever it is sought in aid of legislation. To this end, Congress' power of inquiry is inherent in the power to legislate. Despite the fact that there is a pending case in the Sandigan Bayan, the Supreme Court have specifically expounded in the case of Standard Chartered Bank versus Senate Committee on Banks, Financial Institutions and Currencies, GR number 16713, December 27, 2007, that mere filing of a criminal or an administrative complaint before a court or quasi-judicial body should not automatic, automatically bar the conduct of legislative investigation. Otherwise, it would be extremely easy to subvert any intended inquiry by Congress through the convenient ploy of instituting a criminal or administrative complaint. Moreover, it must be stressed that a legislative investigation in aid of legislation and court proceedings have different purposes. Accordingly, the invited resource persons have their duty to cooperate, to respond to questions, to respect the dignity of the Senate and its committees, and to testify fully in the matters under investigation. Kaya ngayon, inaasahan ko ang kooperasyon ng lahat ng ating mga panauhin para matulungan ang committing ito. This hearing is not to point fingers to someone else. This hearing is with a purpose to monitor bureaucratic compliance and to ascertain if the laws passed by Congress have been implemented as to its purpose. Before we begin our discussion, may we know if uh, Senator Tolentino would like to deliver his uh, prelim preliminary statement? Thank you, we have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think this is a very timely inquiry and see face of Senator Amy Marcos, we just had a Foreign Affairs Committee hearing last week, something to do with arms trade treaty. And some of the police officers here can attest to that. So it, it is not just the, the past incident, but the prevention of proliferation to the black market of firearms. And, and I see the relevance of this, especially the fall of the Afghan government Afghanistan, wherein loose firearms will be uh, coursed through the black market, and we're talking about hundreds of thousands of uh, unused loose firearms. So this is very timely, Mr. Uh, Chairman. So I will gladly listen to the discussions. Thank you, Senator Tolentino. Uh, now uh, we'd like to give the floor to Senator Ivy Marcos, ma'am. Senator Amy Marcos. Ma'am, you have the floor. It takes you. Ah, uh, okay. While, uh, ma'am, hello. Senator Amy Marcos. Alam kong uh, you are attending another uh, hearing. But uh, you have the floor in this committee. Hola, no? Anyway, uh, balikan natin si Senator Amy Marcos later. Uh, from here, uh, I would like to, para uh, hindi natin maubos yung oras ni Mayor Magalong, I would like to uh, give the floor to Mayor Magalong, if he, he has any for a while, sir, uh, Komsik, uh, please uh, uh, swear in the our uh, resource person. Thank you, sir. 
May we request everyone who are virtually present and physically present to stand up and raise their hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth in this investigation? Thank you. Thank you very much. Please take seats. Thank you, Kumsik. Uh, <coughs> uh, Mayor Magalong, sir, you have the floor. If you have uh, any opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And yeah. I would like to greet uh, Senator Tol Tolentino and Senator Aimee Marcos and all the other resource persons who are present here today. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Mr. Chair, I have a presentation with your permission. Right, sir, go ahead. Let me just inform you also before I proceed that this investigation was conducted sometime in, we started it sometime in November 2013, and it ended up sometime in April 2014. And together with me was then Senior Superintendent Robert Fajardo, who was then the head of the NCR CIDG, and his deputy, Senior Superintendent Danilo Maserin. And this investigation was conducted on orders of then Chief PNP General Alan Purisima. So was a backgrounder on September 12, 2013, Superintendent Excelso Lazaga of the Chief of FESAG's Fort PRO 13, for that matter. FESAGS means Firearms and Explosive Security and Guard Supervision. And this is in Region 13, conducted an inventory and accounting of the 257 high-powered rifles registered to JTC Mining Corporation in Puro, Marasigan, Santa Cruz, Agusan del Sur. JTC management, however, only presented eight Bushmaster M16 rifles. They denied ownership of the 247 units of AK-47 rifles purportedly registered under its name. In the light of this alarming discovery, the chief PNP then ordered the CIDG, then headed by me, to conduct an in-depth investigation on the matter. Our initial investigation uncovered that a certain Mr. Isidro Losada received the 247 units of AK-47 in behalf of the JTC Mining Corporation. Investigators also learned that the same Mr. Lusada, owner and proprietor of Carga Security Agency, purchased 269 units of AK-47. As the investigation progressed, robbers also discovered that Mr. Lusada withdrew AK-47 rifles in behalf of Isla Security Agency and Claver Mining or Mineral Development Corporation. And aside from these rifles, Employees of A-Zone, a branch of Twin Pines Incorporated, based in Butuan City, claim that Mr. Lusada also purchased around 135,000 rounds of ammunition, 1.62, and 1,320 magazines for AK-47 rifles. All the AK-47 rifles were purchased from Twin Pines Incorporated from 2011 to 2013 across 23 transactions. Altogether, the four business entities have on record 1,004 units of AK-47 rifles broken down as follows. JTC Mining Corporation, 247. Caraga Security Agency, 362. Isla Security Agency, 160 and Claver Mineral Development Corporation at 235 for a total of 1,004 units of AK-47. When interviewed by investigators, Mrs. Feli Lumakad, the owner of Isla Security Agency, outrightly denied that they purchased the aforesaid AK-47 rifles, nor did they or did the company authorize anybody to purchase this type of firearms in its behalf. Meanwhile, despite earnest efforts 
investigators failed to locate the owner, manager, or employer or employees of the Clubber Mining Development Corporation. Evidently, all the 1,004 AK-47 rifles cannot be accounted for, including those delivered to the Caraga Security Agency. So on February 20, 2014, Mr. Lozada appeared at the office of the NCRCIDG, where he was casually interviewed by me and a couple of investigators together with Senior Superintendent Robert Fardo and Senior Superintendent Danilo Masirin. Without hesitation, he confided that he was used by the CPPNPA or CNN as courier to purchase AK-47 rifles and was forced to cooperate due to the threat and intimidation against himself and his family. He disclosed that the CNN provided the money and documents for each transaction. The cost of each firearm was at 52,000 pesos. He simply gave the money and documents to Azone, the Twin Pines branch in Butuan City, and waited for notice if the firearms have already arrived. He claimed that he never transacted business at the Firearms Explosives Office and never engaged any personnel of the Firearm Explosive Office. Once a delivery arrives in Butuan City, Azone contacts Luzada, who subsequently informs his CNN contacts. Arrangements were discussed on how firearms will be delivered, including descriptions of persons and vehicles. In most instances, deliveries were done casually in bus terminals, market parking areas, and at the airport of Butuan City during daytime. However, Mr. Lozada refused to reduce his revelations and statements into writing. With the sensitive information provided by Lozada, CIDG requested the Philippine Army to turn over to the PNP all captured AK-47 rifles for forensics. Of the four or the of the four forty-four or of the forty-four AK-47 rifles that were submitted to the PNP crime lab, five were traced to the 1004 missing AK-47. According to the technicians, almost all the rifles were severely defaced serial numbers and its serial numbers are difficult to restore. Another critical information was elicited from Police Chief Inspector Ricardo Sumalde, who was then the Sir, Chief excuse me. Of... Excuse me, sir. Excuse yes. me, can I uh, butt in? Uh, balik nga yung, one, yung last slide. Sir, uh, itong 44 AK-47 rifles, only five were traced to the 1,004 missing AK-47, meaning 39, hindi ma, ma relate back doon sa 1,004 na missing? Yes, most probably, Mr. Chair, dahil nga, dahil nga karamihan din nito mga 44 na AK-47, eh, karamihan din sa kanila defaced. Not necessary ah. na sinasabi natin na, na not necessary na sinasabi natin, hindi part ito na 1,004, instead, except for the 5, Pero kasi deface na rin eh. Hindi na rin ma-restore yung mga nilang mga numbers. But, but, but uh, personally sir, not officially. Personally, anong tingin mo? Part ito? Yeah, or really, many of the AK-47 rifles, Mr. Chair, were actually probably, probably part of the 1,000 plus missing AK-47 rifles. Thank you sir. But, but kasi by, by the looks alone, makikita uman yung similarity siguro. Yes, uh, but my by the looks alone lang. Anyway, it will it may not stand in court, pero uh, sa atin lang, ipakiramdam lang natin mukhang kamukha, mukhang pareho sir. Yes, Mr. Mr. Chair. Looking at the design, looking at the uh, the, uh, the the physical appearance of the AK-47, some of the AK-47, part of the 44 are similar to the five that were traced to the 1000 plus missing rifles. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Eh, somebody, sa um, Senator Aimee, ma'am? Ma yes, sir, uh, may uh, break sandali, sir, para makainom ka ng tubig. I will, uh, <laughs> uh, I will, uh, we yield to Senator Aimee Marcos. Go ahead, ma'am. 
No, Mr. Chair, I, uh, just want, I was just reporting for duty and for quorum, uh, being that we're all attending uh, the Blue Ribbon. Nevertheless, um, of the many questions unanswered in the matter of granting the permit, uh, I think there was a field assessment and uh, perhaps we can uh, derive uh, from uh, the uh, PNP said document for all these different steps. We know there are several steps required. Siguro kailangan ibuuyan. And also the policy of uh, what is the policy being followed in cases of ownership of high-powered firearms by security agencies? Siguro that's something that we can look at given that our committee is investigating in aid of legislation. Perhaps this area needs to be uh, clarified. And uh, certainly the uh, proliferation of illegal firearms continues to uh, uh, trouble uh, our peace and order situation. Um, furthermore, uh, the uh, official cases on graft and corruption need to be updated because uh, a accountability has to be made. And uh, there was, in 2018, former Secretary Aguirre's Department Order 007, our favorite number, directing the NBI to investigate Whatever happened to the NBI uh, uh, report? So, yun lang yung uh, mga matters of interest natin. And uh, with this, I hope uh, our committee is now legal and with quorum. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. Actually, I first uh, acknowledge your presence. And uh, ikaw una kong papadeliver sana ng opening statement. Pero alam kong nasa kabila ka rin, committed ka sa kabila. Thank you for that, ma'am. Thank you. And for your concern, uh, we'll hear from NBI later, ma'am. Uh, for, for the meantime, uh, please, uh, General Magalong, sir. Uh, Mayor Magalong, sir, continue, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, to proceed, another critical information was elicited from Police Chief Inspector Ricardo Somalde, who was then the Chief of the Storage Division during that interview. He revealed that he saw the packages containing the plastic wrap and disassembled major parts of the AK-47 rifles when these arrived at the FEO storage. <coughs> Mr. Chair, hindi po ako COVID, ha? Naubo lang ako. <laughs> alam ko, sir. Alam ko. Well, vaccinated ka na. Kaya pinapabreak kita para makain mga tubig dahil matutuyo talaga yung lalamunan mo, sir, pagkatuloy-tuloy. Thank Please you, Mr. Chair. Thank um, Chief Inspector, then Chief Inspector Sumalde admitted that each package can easily be disassembled or and assembled into one complete firearm. So, contrary to what Twin Pines declared that the shipment consists of only parts for manufacturing purposes, the packages actually contain complete firearms ready to be assembled, including the barrel, which in itself alone is already considered a complete firearm pursuant to IRR of PD 1866, Section 1A. However, Police Chief Inspector Somalde did not report such observation and opted to remain silent. A thorough examination of the critical documents covering the purchases made by the four business entities revealed that despite glaring deficiencies and lacking requirements, the applications for firearm licenses were processed and approved. Hereunder are some of the irregularities that were noted. There were applications which were approved or processed even without the requisite documents and requirements such as NBI and DI clearance. Lacking signature of document processors from the juridical section no threat assessment attached to the application, no SEC or DTI certification, and submitted affidavits were not notarized. By and large, those responsible in processing and approving the applications failed to exercise due diligence, despite the fact that the purchases involved a large number of high-powered firearms. FEO also miserably failed to closely monitor the movement of the firearms after these, after these were released from storage to its intended user. Such negligence and complacency were committed during the incumbency 
of then Police Chief Superintendent Raul Petrasanta and Director Napoleon Estilias as Chief FEO. Adding to the dysfunction and suspicious actions of police, adding to that dysfunction is the suspicious actions of Police Chief Superintendent Tomas Rentor, then Chief Socia. Surprisingly, he issued the authority to purchase firearms notwithstanding the attached license to operate of the Caraga Security Agency, which was already expired. He also failed to consider that a security agency can only procure high-powered firearms equivalent to 10% of its total firearms. He likewise issued authority to purchase to Isla Security Agency and Claver Mineral Development. After our investigation, Mr. Chair, I recommended to the Chief PNP that the criminal case for violation of Section 3A, 3E, and 3J of Republic Act 3019 as amended, and violations of Section 1 of the Republic Act 8294, as well as administrative cases for grave misconduct and incompetence, be referred to the Ombudsman against the personalities involved in the processing approval and release of all these rifles. It was further recommended that the filing of cases will be on per transaction basis, considering that there were a total of 23 transactions covering all these 100,000 plus missing AK-47 rifles. That was in 2014, April, Mr. Chair. And the following day, I sent another letter to Secretary or to General Alan Purisima, which he signed. And this was addressed to the President of the Republic of the Philippines, His Excellency Kino. And the contents of that letter is as follows. Your Excellency, this pertains to the investigation conducted by this group or the CIDG on the missing AK-47 high-powered rifle. Investigation covered 23 transactions involving a total of 1,004 units procured from 2011 to 2013. During the investigation, it was established that 19 PNP personnel involved in the processing, approval, and release of these high-powered rifles may have incurred criminal or administrative liabilities. Out of these seven, out of this number, rather, seven are presidential appointees, namely Police Director Kiel Meneses, Police Director Napoleon Estilias, Police Chief Superintendent Raul Petrasanta, Police Chief Superintendent Tomas Rentoy, Police Chief Superintendent Regis Catiz, and Police Senior Superintendent Ed Eduardo Acierto, and Police Superintendent Alan Pareño. In this regard, May I respectfully request for an authority to refer the matter to the Office of the Ombudsman for the disposition of the cases against subject presidential appointees. After we received, Mr. Chair, after we received the approval of the President, we immediately turned over all the documents, all the files to Deputy Ombudsman Cyril Ramos. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Maraming salamat for that very comprehensive uh, presentation. Uh, very clear your presentation, mo, sir. Uh, I think I have no other uh, questions to ask. At uh, maraming salamat for your time. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Maraming salamat din po. Thank you, sir. Mr. Uh, from here, uh, may we hear from... Uh, As General uh, General Pero, the director said, uh, present uh, DG director. Go ahead. Mr. Chair, may I be allowed to remove my mask? Sir? Yeah, go ahead. You are more than three meters from me. You can go ahead and remove that. <laughs> to the Honorable Chairman of this uh, August body, the Senate Committee on Public Order, Endangered Drugs, Senator Ronald Bato, 
M. De La Rosa, sir, and Senator Francis uh, Tol Tolentino, sir. All uh, the distinguished legislator, Ma'am Aimee, who is virtually uh, with us, and attendees, especially uh, uh, Sir Benji Magalong, the mayor of Baguio City, who make our job more easier with his presentation. But uh, in a while, my uh, investigation chief will also present a presentation which is uh, similar to that of uh, uh, Sir Benji. I am Police Major General Albert Ignatius Ferro, the Director of the Criminal Investigation and Detection Group of the Philippine National Police. On behalf of the entire Philippine National Police, I would like to express our sincerest gratitude to the distinguished chairman and members of this committee for inviting the PNP to this public hearing and inquiry in aid of legislation to address such problems in our country. We manifest our full support to the noble intent and endeavor of this honorable committee that will strengthen our laws and policies on the issuance and granting of firearms licenses and permits. This is consistent with existing programs and activities of the PNP, now under the leadership of our Chief PNP, Police General Guillermo Lorenzo T. Eliazar. As one of your law enforcement agencies, we are with you on all measures undertaking that will enhance the enforcement of our laws, rules, and regulation for a highly capable, effective, and credible police service working in partnership with a responsive community towards the attainment of a safer place to live, work, and do business. The gang salamat, your honors, a pleasant day to all, and may I request my Chief Investigation uh, Division to uh, uh, present what was uh, this uh, committee hearing is all about and mayong buntag sa atong tanan. Before you proceed, uh, Colonel Hippolito, uh, meron bang difference yung ipapresent mo sa present ni Mayor Magalong? Actually, sir, there was uh, none in, in the case of the investigation conducted by the CIDG. However, I will just be presenting the, the updates on the cases as well as the recovery of some of the AK-47 rifles. Okay, okay. So, uh, go ahead, uh, Senator Tolentino. Mr. Chair, uh, this is a different matter, but this is germane to the issue. Uh, it has something to do with a... It's nothing to do with the AK-47 uh, issue, but it has something to do with a pending measure in, in the Senate, which... Probably General Perro can guide us. Senator Bato and I are opposing the establishment of a judicial martial system, not because of the system, but a provision therein which calls for allowing the Supreme Court to issue permits, special permits for the issuance of firearms. So may, may we request from your end, General, a position paper whether the firearms uh, uh, office, office of the PNP is in agreement with that. Uh, alam niyo yon para mag-guide kami ni Senator Bato kasi ang gusto nila, hindi na kayo mag issue ng permit to carry sa firearms, hindi na rin ang mag issue Supreme Court para doon sa judicial martial tao nila. Yes, sir. So, we will uh, submit to this uh, committee. Not, re not related to this, but uh, later on will be related. So, if you can furnish Senator Bato and yes, sir. myself uh, that position paper. It will guide us accordingly. Salamat. Yes, uh, thank you, sir. Salamat, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Tolentino. Uh, take note, uh, General Romel Mitra, of that concern para mabigyan nyo kami. Thank you. Uh, so, kung pwede, ay present mo lang yung hindi na present ni General Magalong. Yes, sir. I okay, yung mga additional mo na lang uh, info. Opo, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I will be skipping the presentation as regards to the Investigation conducted by the CIDG since it was already presented by the Honorable Mayor of Baguio City. So I will be presenting on the timeline kindly.
on the se slide 12, please, on the second to the last uh, slides. Yes, sir. Uh, second to the last slides na po. Next. Next. Uh, the second to the last. That That is the first slide on the timeline. Yeah. Uh, sir, I will be skipping my presentations and go directly to the timeline for the updates of the cases filed as well as the AK-47 that are already accounted. For the information of the body, some of the missing AK-47 were already accounted when a combined PNP and Army checkpoint on June 24, 2014 in Trento, Agusan del Sur, sees a total of 18 assorted firearms that includes six AK-47 from the vehicle occupied by the branch manager and staff of Caraga Security Agency. Luzada claim ownership of the AK-47 rifles and the rest of the firearms. He also admitted that he has a total of 31 sec made AK-47 rifles, which is part of the 362 AK-47 rifles which Caraga Security Agency procured from Twin Pines Incorporated. On the filing of case before the Ombudsman, on October 21, 2014, in a 39-page order, Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales approved the indictment of Police Director Petra Santa and 14 others in the Sandigan Bayan for multiple counts of graft in connection with the missing AK-47 assault rifles. The Ombudsman also included as private respondent in the case Isidro Luzada, the registered owner of Caraga Security Agency. As to the update of the filed cases, on February 28, 2018, the case for falsification by private individual and use of falsified document using fictitious name and concealing true name was filed against Isidro Luzada and others. And it was excuse me, excuse me. Yes, sir. Yung 18 na nakuha, na sa, nakuha sa checkpoint is already part of that 44 accounted for so far? Uh, uh, we will uh, check on that, on that cell. But however, this was uh, an incident uh, that transpired after the filing of the case, sir. So, pa kindly find out yes, sir. kung that, sir. yung sinasabi dito na 44 so far accounted kasama na ba yung 18? If not, then... Uh, Please inform this committee. Uh, actually, sir, 31 po ito, yung anim nakuha doon sa sasakyan. Tapos, uh, inamin na lang ni Luzada na may 31 siya, sir. Bali, may 25 pa siya aside from the 6 that was recovered uh, in his vehicle, sir. So, may 25 daw siya na, ano, sir, nasa possession niya. Hindi niyo nakuha? Ang... Ano, sir, is uh, i-validate lang namin kasi this is just a progress report uh, in 2014. 2014. Yes, sir. But we will uh, look into that, sir. Continue. So, to continue, uh, the case of falsification by private individual and use of falsified document using fictitious name and concealing true name was filed against, which was filed against Isidro Lusada and, uh, and others was elevated to the municipal trial court while the case for Estapa against the same personality was dismissed. On May 12, 2018, the Ombudsman in a 33-page decision found Police Chief Superintendent Petro Santa, Police Senior Superintendent Asierto, Pareño, Police Chief Inspector Bautista, Zapata, and Sumalde, SPO1 Stan and Desesto, and UP Pirote and Bargan guilty of, of grave misconduct, serious dishonesty, and conduct prejudicial to the best interest of the service, and imposes upon them the penalty of dismissal from the service. On the other hand, the complaint against Police Chief Inspector Sarmiento Jr. and in UP de la Cruz was dismissed for lack of substantial evidence. Likewise, the complaint against, against Police Director Meneses, Police Chief Superintendent Estillas, and Police Chief Superintendent Rentoy III was dismissed for lack of disciplinary jurisdiction over them in view of their retirement from the service 
prior to the filing of the complaint. So that is all for my uh, presentation and update, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yun bang na-recover, bago lang, uh, two days ago or uh, three days ago, may na-recover na mga AK-47 ammunition doon sa, sa Caraga region. Uh, have you heard of that? Uh, yes, sir. Actually, uh, it is uh, a... Uh, uh, we are still on the process of uh, validating if it's the same ordered of uh, the secure yung JTC mining, sir. So, but uh, those uh, ammunition that was recovered are for the AK-47, sir, of the CTGs in the area. We are sure of that na yung mga bala na yun, sir, talagang naka para doon sa anong yun, sa mga yung ginagamit ng mga CTGs doon sa sa Caraga area. Nap napunta niyo, natingnan niyo kung kung ah. brand new ba talaga o kasi kung 2013 20 uh, 2012 2013 na na procured yun, may kalumaan na yun ngayon. Pero kung yeah. brand new, baka mamaya nagpapatuloy pa rin yung ganung klaseng uh, kalakalan ng bala. Uh, yes sir. Actually sir, last month or uh, one month and a half, may nahuli kaming almost 1,000 na bala sa, sa possession ng dalawang uh, CTG senior leaders dito sa Manila. And uh, yung nakuha sa Karaga is related sa nakuha namin dito na isang libo na bala ng AK-47. So ang, ina, ang binavalidate lang namin, kung yan, yung ba yung related dito sa AK-47 noong 2014. Masakit yun pag tumama sa atin. 7.62 mm yun. Ang kaliber noon. Napakalaki yun. Huwag <laughs> yun ang tumama sa atin. Ang atin, 5.56 lang. Tapos binubugahan tayo ng 7.62. Napakasakit noon. Eh, nakita nyo naman sir noong 1989 yung sa inkwentro natin sa Lupon, Dabo Oriental. Natanggal yung ulo ng lead scout ko noon eh. Nung kayo yung CO namin sa ARSAP noon sir. Ganun ko yun, kalakas yung 7.62, sir. Important yun, important, uh, 7.62. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody from those who, uh, who are physically present would like to give any, more, any opening statement? Wala na? So, let's go back to the virtual uh, list. Uh, from here, we would like to recognize Attorney Don Rick Ventura, uh, representative of uh, Secretary Midardo Gibara of uh, DOJ. Are you still around, Good sir? morning, Your Honor. Sorry? Yes, go ahead. You have Good the morning, Your Honor. Um, to the chair and the members of the committee, Senator Sorrentino and Senators, Senator Marcos, to the distinguished guests, um, members of the Secretariat, ladies and gentlemen. The Department of Justice fully supports the resolution filed by Senator De La Rosa in the investigation of those loose firearms, the 1004 AK-47, which were sold to the NPA. We fully support the same. Yeah. <clears throat> In fact, a department order 007, which was already <clears throat> mentioned by Senator Marcos, was issued by the DOJ last January 9, 2018, wherein the subject of which is the authority to conduct investigation and case buildup over the missing Philippine National Police Firearms, which were sold to the New People's Union. Thank you, Your Honor. We fully support the resolution. Thank you, Attorney Ventura. Uh, do you have uh, any update on that? Uh, kung nag-report na sa inyo yung NBI regarding the the result of that uh, investigation? No, wala. No, wala si Attorney Rick Ventura. We have, uh, do we have NBI here? NBI. So, kung wala ng NBI, 
Yes, sir. Let's, uh, uh, yes, sir. And... The attorney Alice uh, Aukit Ban. At saka si Mr. Jose Dundi Santos um, ng NBI. Are you around, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Um, yes, yes I, I just would like to, to know kung mayroon kayo update doon sa re-investigation na ni-require sa inyo from DOJ. Mayroon ba kayong result na doon sa ginawa niyong re-investigation? Uh, yes, sir. Go ahead, go ahead. You have the floor. Uh, I only have served the yes, sir. Uh, I only have served the request from from the community and public uh, regarding the information about the contact numbers and email addresses of the seven subjects, including uh, Isidro Lasada and six others. And I was the one sir who was uh, tasked to uh, verify uh, based on our record check and uh, issued clearances to these seven subjects to check if there are if there are contact numbers and email addresses. Uh, so so far based on our uh today and uh, last Friday we have no information based on our record and uh, issued clearances about the contact numbers and the email addresses of the seven persons. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you, also, sir. Thank you. Uh... Okay. How about uh, Attorney Alice Aukit? You want to say something, ma'am? Aukit Ban Egg? Aukit. Yes, good morning, Mr. Chair. Yeah, go ahead. You want to uh, say good something? morning, sir. Yes, sir, yes. I was uh, tasked also to attend this uh, Senate inquiry in order for us to take notes as well as uh, with regards to the position paper that we will be uh, submitting in the future, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you very much. So from here, we uh, give the floor to one of the, the, the spokesperson of uh, the accused, uh, General, retired General uh, Hill Menezes. Sir, you have the floor. Good morning, Your Honors. Good morning. The chairman of the Senate Committee on Public yeah, the, the Chairman of the Senate Committee on Public Safety and Dangerous Drugs. Honorable Senator uh, Ronald De La Rosa, other members of the committee present, Honorable Senator Amy Marcos and Honorable Senator Francis Tolentino, representatives from DOJ, from the NBI, from uh, the PNP, who are present. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. We have no hand in the alleged sale of AK-47 rifles to the MPA. Your Honors, on behalf of, the fe of my fellow PNP officers invited as resource persons in this uh, Senate hearing, I would like to reiterate that we have no hand or any participation and knowledge whatsoever in the alleged sale of AK-47 rifles to the New People's Army operating in Mindanao. We would like to manif manifest, though, as already stated by the Honorable Senator Chairman of the Committee and of uh, the Honorable Mayor of Baguio City, that there are already pending cases on these issues being heard by the Sandigam Bayan. Through this opening statement, we earnestly hope that this August Chamber and its members, including the public, and the press would be enlightened that we, former officers and personnel of the PNP Civil Security Group, the PNP Firearms and Explosive Office, and the PNP Supervisory Office for Security and Investigation Agencies cannot and should not be faulted 
or even held accountable. On uh, the alleged sale of the AK-47 to the NPA, the truth of the matter is that the 1,004 units of AK-47 or CZ rifles subject of uh, this inquiry were part of the numerous firearms imported into the country by Twin Pines Incorporated, a registered firearms dealer, which was also the indentor and importer of all these firearms, pursuant to the authority to import firearms issued by several chiefs of the Philippine National Police in the past. The firearms were privately owned by Twin Pines and not owned by the PNP, thus no government properties were involved. Upon arrival of the firearms into the country, they were brought and stored at a bodega rented and controlled by Twin Pines located inside the PNP FEO. Like in the case of all PNP accredited firearms dealers, the firearms cannot be withdrawn from the bodega only can be withdrawn from their bodega only when licenses are issued and permits to, tra to transport the firearms are secured by the dealer from the PNP FEO. The firearms were purchased from Twin Pines by four juridical entities, namely Caraga Security Agency, Isla Security Agency, Claver Mineral Development Corporation, and JTC Mineral Mining Corporation, all based in Mindanao between the years 2011 to 2013. The documents required to license the firearms were collated by Twin Pines store in Butuan City, and its concerned staff testified that they transmitted the complete documentary requirements to their main branch here in Manila. And their main branch here in Manila was the one which submitted the complete documents to the PNP FAO for processing of the licenses. Since there were complete documentary requirements submitted, appropriate licenses for the firearms were issued and eventually the firearms were allowed to be released from the Twin Pines bodega and transported to its registered store in San Juan City, duly escorted by PNP FEO personnel as required by law. The 1004 AK-47 or CSA rifles arrived in their store with corresponding firearms licenses and were eventually released by them, escorted by their two security guards to the buyers through the buyer's representative, a certain Mr. Isidro Lozada. The delivered firearms were duly and properly recepted by the latter. It must be stressed, your honors, that after escorting the firearms to Twin Pines registered store in San Juan City, the PNP FEO has no more control and responsibility over the disposition of the firearms unless Twin Pines requested for another escort when it moved the firearms from one place to another. However, the PNP did not receive such request. Based on news reports published in June 2014, as stated by the Honorable Mayor of Baguio, Mr. Rosada claimed that he was forced to sell the guns to the MPA members because the latter threatened to kill him and his uh, family members. He admitted that he sold the assault rifles to NPA buyers for 52,000 pesos each in tranches of 30 to 50 units per transaction, done in markets, bus terminals, sea, and airports from 2011 to 2013. Kami po sa PNPFEO, kami po, kasama dito po sa mga kaso na naisampa sa, um, sa Sandigan Bayan ay nag-process lang ng mga required gun documents na isinumiti sa amin ng Twin Pines. Wala kaming alam sa partisipasyon o partisipasyon sa mga transaksyon na daganap between Twin Pines at ng apat na buyer na juridical entities. 
di namin mawari kung bakit kami ang nadidiin sa kasong ito na umanoy pagbebenta ng baril sa NPA na wala namang kaming partisipasyon kahit anuman. We have no hand, again, we have no hand in the alleged sale of AK-47 to the MPAs. Ang mga paratang na ito ay unfair or unjust sa amin at sa aming mga pamilya. Yun lang po ang aming masasabi at buong katotohanan, Mr. Chairman, Your Honors. At handa po kaming sumagot sa anuman ninyong katanungan. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, opening statement. But uh, I, I think uh, ito lang rin ang aking reaction dyan. Is, uh, you, you don't have the participation in the sale of those uh, firearms. But you have a very big part in the regulation of the sale of these firearms. So kaya siguro napailan rin kayo ng kaso, baka dyan sa portion ng regula regulation. But anyway, sir, uh, before we delve into that, ang akin lang is uh, just to set the record straight. Kasi from the presentation of General Magalong, uh, if, I am, if uh, I am correct, my understanding is that the money or the funds used to procure the AK-47 rifles, according to Mr. Lusada, came from the NPA. Ginawa lang siyang uh, parang uh, uh, utusan para bumili. Pero sa sinabi mo ngayon, ang nangyari, parang si Lusada ang nagbibinta, binili niya ang baril sa Twin Pines, tapos bininta niya sa uh, NPA at the certain price of 52 uh, thousand pesos uh, per unit. Uh, now, which is which? Uh, which, which is which? Uh, may I refer back to General Magalong, sir? Uh, ano ba talaga ang nangyari? Go ahead, sir. You have the floor. Mr. Chair, according to Mr. Lusada, if my memory serves me right, sinabi niya na he was only the conduit. And he also mentioned the name of the NPA commander who contacted Sanda. him. At binang ang pera talagang galing sa NPA, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, uh, uh, does uh, General Minisys uh, agree with that uh, statement? Para uh, isa lang yung ating uh, line of uh, thought nito, sir, sa investigation na ito. Uh, do you agree with that, sir, General Minisys? a oh. newspaper items which said those uh, those facts uh, or maybe not those story uh, but the, the truth of the matter is that we do not know anything about the transaction between uh, Twin Pines and Lusada much more between Lusada and the NPA your honors thank you sir thank you sir uh, itong si Mr. Lusada uh, after yung appearance niya, Sir General Magalong, sa office ninyo, which uh, uh, resulted to your informal uh, investigation without uh, reducing this uh, uh, his statement into writing, after that, uh, may alam pa kayo, Sir, kung nasaan na siya? Kasi ngayon, no, for, no to be found talaga siya. PNP, uh, General Pero, Magalong, alam niyo kung nasaan? Ah, Magalong. Si... Sorry, sorry sir. Uh, Lusada, malulukit pa ninyo? Ayun sir ang uh, pinagsisikapan uh, namin na mahanap siya. Kasi ongoing naman yung sunto uh, sir and uh, we will uh, update you sir kung kasi yung existing na mga warrant of arrest, hindi pa namin na uh, i-check pa rin yung kung may uh, existing na warrant of arrest sir, siya iba. For that, for that matter, gamitin yung intelligence ng PNP para malukit ito. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Para managot itong tao na ito. Yes, sir. In BI, you have information about uh, about uh, Lusada, the suspect? In BI? Yeah, I, I am asking in BI if you have any information as to the whereabouts 
of uh, John Lusada, the central figure in this uh, AK-47 controversy. Alam nyo kung nasaan si Lusada? As of now, sir, uh, we have no information about that. And this investigator has just passed to, to, to do the uh, intelligence operation. So thank you. Uh, General Magalong, sir, after that, uh, as I have uh, mentioned earlier, after your conversation, nalukit pa niyo si Isidro Lusada. Thank you, sir. Initially, oh, nakiki, we're still in touch. We were still in touch with him, uh, Mr. Chair. Unfortunately, uh, hindi ko na rin po na-follow up dahil nung nagkaroon na rin po tayo ng Mama Sapano, we were already, since we already turned over the case to the Ombudsman, uh, nahinto na rin po yung pag-follow up namin regarding yung to, to reduce his statement into writing. So, Mr. Chairman, really very sorry. Uh, you know, I really don't have any, I can, I can no longer recall any instance wherein we were able to get in touch with him after that, uh, after that particular meeting. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, puntahan natin ang Twin Pines. Uh, the representative of Twin Pines, is he around? Uh, here, here, Your Honor. Yeah, Mr. Sibando Tupasio. Uh, do you have any opening statement? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Permission to read my statement. Yeah, go ahead, please. Good floor. morning, Your Honors and uh, the Honorable Chairman. I am Servando Topacio, representing Twin Pines Incorporated. I used to be the company's president and general manager, but I am now retired. I would like to thank this Honorable Committee for inviting me to these proceedings and for the opportunity to shed light on events that transpired almost 10 years ago. As your honors are undoubtedly aware, this is not the first time that this issue has been investigated. The series of investigations conducted by the PNP and the House of Representatives, we have always cooperated and tried to help as best as we could. Despite this, we found, our, we found ourselves as respondents before the office of the Ombudsman, but thankfully the case against us has already been dismissed. Twin Pines has been in the firearms business since 1983. And over a period of almost three years, from 2011 to 2013, we sold AK-47 rifles to Mr. Isidro Lazada, representative of certain security agencies and mining companies in Butuan City. The sale of the rifles to these companies were all authorized, confirmed, and approved by the Firearms and Explosive Office of the FEO the Philippine National Police. As a mere private seller, we would like to stress that Twin Pines does not participate in the regulatory process of firearms licensing and registration. We simply forward all these documents submitted by the buyers to the FEO for their evaluation and approval, following their own approval process. We hope that we can provide assistance to the committee in the investigation and in coming up with the appropriate legislation if necessary. Thank you very much, Your Honors. Mr. Topasio, may we know anong kaso pinail ng uh, initially ng uh, ombudsman sa inyo? Draft Your Honor. Then, uh, together, with, together with Mr. Losada and uh, um, PNP personnel. And uh, when was this uh, dismissed by the Ombudsman? Uh, 2015, Your Honor. So, wala na kayong kaso ngayon? Okay na? Uh, no more, Your Honor. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, ito na lang, uh, from your end, from your end, being uh, from the a firearms uh, sector, no? Uh, firearms uh, manufacturers and uh, distributor. Ano mo kami matutulungan dito? Do you have in, in a, any way na hindi na ito maulit? Lessons learned natin sa transaction na ito. Ano bang contribute mo dito para sa amin? From the policy perspective, 
para matulungan nyo kami mag ng policy na hindi na ito maulit. Your Honor, before the system was only the letter of intent and authority from the buyer. Thus, all other supporting papers required by the FED. That was not really formalized. Now, we have a new law, Republic Act 10591, which is the Comprehensive Firearms Law. And now, together with the revised IRR, signed by Senator De La Rosa when he was PNP chief, only the President, Vice President, Secretary, Treasurer, will now be allowed to process a firearms application and backed up by a board resolution. If the firm involved is not a security agency, he will have to file for an additional license to operate a private security force. This was all done with the IRR, Your Honor. Now also because of the efforts of Senator De La Rosa, we have a computerized system in the FED which means you can only upload your application through the FED portal. If the documents are not submitted to the portal, the system will give a warning or a prompt that will make the process stop. You cannot go further. Number two, the system is now uh, at arm's length, which means the evaluator of the application is assigned randomly and they do not meet face to face. Thus giving the system a transparency and trust that everybody can at least feel better about. That's all, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh... So sa tingin mo, mahirapan na ito maulit, ha? With the new system, it is much better. Opinion ko lang, Your Honor. Yeah, for, for the record, uh, for the record, itong uh, transaction na ito, uh, ilang transaction yun? Sinabi ni General Magalong kanino? Covering how many transactions? 20 23 plus. transactions. Uh, between uh, 2011 to 2013. Uh, for the record, itong transaction na ito nangyari before the enactment into loan itong uh, 10591, R18591. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. It was before 10591. So meaning, the cure for this controversy, the cure for this uh, problem is 10591. In my opinion, yes, Your Honor. And the IRR that you signed. Okay. Uh, so, yun na pala. It, it answers the... Kasi, I have heard that the, during the 24th... Uh, during the uh, 16th Congress, when the Senate uh, conducted its own uh, hearing into this uh, problem, this, uh, into this issue, uh, General Po was asked by uh, now Senator, uh, Senate President uh, Vicente Soto uh, kailangan pa ba nating i-amend yung 10591 para maiwasang mangyari itong uh, problema na ito in the future then the answer of uh, General Po was uh, no longer needed daw your honor sabi niya hindi na kailangan uh, sapat na daw itong batas na ito. So, again today, I would like to pose the same question to the PNP nandito kayo at sa lahat ng ating mga resource persons. Alam ko, you're conversant uh, with this law. Uh, do you think kailangan pa natin baguhin itong R18591 para hindi na ito mangyari or sapat na ito? What do you think? Uh, first, uh, General Pero. Actually, sir, the restriction embodied in the Republic Act 10591 is, uh, I think, uh, is uh, capable to stop the uh, similar incident. Bawal na kasi, sir, yung dalawang classing firearms, yung small arms saka yung light weapon. Ang difference lang ng small arms sir, saka light weapon is, yung light weapon, sir, is uh, automatic. Yung uh, small arms is uh, semi-automatic, single shot ba, sir? So, 
lahat sir ng uh, light weapon hindi na pwedeng i-procure ng any entity like the security agency they they are allowed to only procure yung uh, small arms so in the case of AK47 incident hindi sila pwedeng makakuha na ng automatic weapon so it is only limited to the government uh, juridical forces hindi na pwede sa sa mga security agency including tayo sir nung nagano yung batas sir bawal na rin tayong bumili ng automatic weapon kahit active being be yes, member sir. ka yes sir bawal na yes sir pero yung pero kung dati nabili ka mo noon pwede pwede, pwede pa continuous, continuous yung, position yung uh, possession okay as long as you have your LTAP you have uh, a uh, updated uh, license of your firearms on a regular basis lang sir how about the use, the regulation of the use uh, nitong uh, uh, mga high-powered firearms sa mga security agencies? Bawal na yun, sir. Bawal na? Yes, sir. So, meaning, pag makakita ako ng security guard ngayon, dapat ang armas niya is not bigger than caliber 45 pistol and uh, shotgun. Yun yes. lang armas nila. Yes, sir. basta yung small arms sa kalight weapon lang, sir, ang, ang consideration. Basta lahat ng automatic weapons are considered as light weapon. So kung magkakita ko ng security guard niyo na may hawak ng M16, violation of law na yan? Uh, ang, ang pwede natin tanungin si General uh, ano, sir, sa, General sa, Mitra, you have the floor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the Chairman, Committee on Public Order and uh, the Dangerous Drug, Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa. Good morning, sir. Uh, Police Brigadier General Romil Mitra, the Chief of uh, Firearms Explosive Office. Uh, first, sir, uh, regarding the incident, sir, uh, it happened before the enactment of uh, R18591, sir. And uh, ang uh, ginagamit po ng ating FEO in uh, those transactions are general orders. General order number 52 and SOP. Uh, standard operating procedure number 13, which is about uh, uh, procedure in the licensing of firearm, and general orders number 52 is uh, entities qualified to acquire and possess high fire firearms. That was before the enactment of R18591, sir. Uh, so, after enactment of uh, 10591, yes, they are all repelled. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. So now that we have this uh, 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 comprehensive uh, firearms and ammunition law, uh, sabi nga po, sir, it was your uh, time na na-approve yung RIRR. That was uh, 2018. Revised, Revised IRR. Uh, implementing uh, rules and reg regulation. And the requirements are stringent, sir. Maraming stakeholders ang nagko-complain because of the stringent requirements. Uh, you have to have an LTAP before you can have a firearm. And of course, also included in the IRRR is the uh, requirements uh, in the importation of firearms as well as the requirements in the uh, acquiring a license uh, to deal these firearms. So, sir... Uh, uh, it was mentioned a while ago by Senator uh, uh, Tolentino, sir, about our, uh, 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 last week, sir, uh, we have a, I, I attended the Senate hearing on foreign relations with regards to arms trade treaty, and it was discussed there, sir, na our uh, uh, present law, the RA 10591, 10, uh, it, marami, sir, mga requirements, uh, it needs amendments, sir para maka-coop up with the requirements of the arms trade treaty and i believe sir na that that is that is if that uh, arms treaty yes sir will be ratified by yes. the senate yes sir it remains to be seen yes sir eh yes, marami pang problema yan na uh, itatackle yes, eh, on my part uh, ayaw kong didiktahan tayo ng mga europeans pagdating sa armas we are at their mercy kung uh, kailangan natin ng armas kailangan pa ng approval magaling sa kanila Bago tayo makabili from Israel, from uh, Russia or what? Eh, for me, ayaw ko niyan. Dahil uh, hawak na rin sa liig ng mga Euro Europeans na yan. Bakit tayo magpapa magpapahawak sa kanila? Magpapadikta sa kanila? 
that that's my own opinion lah. Anyway, that's uh, no longer germane to this uh, to this hearing. But uh, ulitin ko lang, sino bang susya dito? Susya. General Bil uh, Billaflor, you are susya. Yes, sir. Ang tanong ko kanina previously, this is with, res with regards to the use and deployment of high-powered firearms, as you said, uh, belonging to ano yun, plus, ano, light weapons A? Small arms A, like uh, M16. Sa mga security guard, authorized pa ba sila gumamit ng ganong armas? Uh, Senator uh, Ronald Bato de la Rosa, sir. I would say, sir, that uh, the security guards uh, employed by the private security agencies during the enactment of the Republic Act 10591, as well as the implementation of its rules and regulation, are not uh, allowed to procure and to use during their deployment uh, light weapons, sir. Because it is clearly provided in the IRR of 10591 that uh, civilian entities, civilian individuals, are not allowed to procure and use such uh, weapons, sir. How about yung meron ng dati? Meron ng dati, can they still use uh, that? Sa I kanilang uh, operations? No, sir, because uh, there is a uh, presidential uh, guidance that uh, all security agencies are directed to surrender all their uh, light weapons, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, madali lang yung sabihin, madali lang yung sabihin ha, pero when you go to the mining areas doon sa Mindanao, makikita ka pa rin doon ng mga naka, uh, bar pa nga, bar, meron pa sila doon importin. Security guard yun ha, ang kanila namang claim is uh, under threat sila sa NPA. Iatakihin yung kanya, susunugin yung kanilang mga... Mga equipo doon, yung kanilang uh, mga tunnels, kapag gigibain yung tunnels sila, kapag wala silang kuhan, armas na panglaban. So, pag may makita ako na security guard na may hawak ng M16, I can call the police to arrest him? Definitely, yes, sir. However, sir, there are models of... Wala? Wala exemption? Wala exemption? Yes, sir. How about yung nag-escort ng mga... Yung pera ng bangko, yung armored van ng mga security agency. Yes, sir. How, however, sir, there are models of rifles that uh, uh, exactly resembles an M16. But uh, if you would uh, inspect them, sir, they are only caliber 22 rifles, sir. Pero kamukhang kamukha, sir, ng Armalite, sir. Kaya, I would like to get it straight from you. Yung mga nag-escort ng mga armored van, ng pera, ng bangko, wala na nagdadala ng uh, high-powered firearms dyan, wala na ng uh, M16 dyan? Hindi na, sir, sila inaalaw and kung may makita, sir, ay pwedeng uh, kumpiskahin at ihabla, sir, yung nagdadala, sir. Thank you. That's very clear. Yes, sir. It's recorded. Next, um, I would like to ask uh, from the uh, virtual attendees, if uh, anybody would like to give us their opening statement para papagbigyan ko kayong lahat bago magpatuloy yung question and answer. You may just sound off from uh, anybody. Basta magsalita. Ano ka sa akin? Wala? Uh, Your Honor, please. Uh, I, I failed to, to, to hear what uh, was being asked of me, Your Honor. Oh, sir, uh, just asking, anybody from the virtual attendees who would like to deliver their uh, uh, statement para mapagbigyan natin? Meron ba? Wala. Uh, how about... Uh, General Ulysses Cruz of the uh, the IDM. Meron ka sabihin? You know. Have the floor.
General Ulysses Cruz. Mahirap itong uh, virtual uh, na kami. Oh. Yun. Go ahead. Sir, uh, so far, sir, I uh, have no other questions, sir. Kasi, sir, uh, sa, based on sa dati, sir, nung ako'y nasa social, sir, inaalaw pa, sir, yung uh, sa Almord, yung, yung ano, sir, high-powered. Pero ngayon para, sir, hindi na, sir. Yun lang, sir. Uh, so far, sir, uh, sana, sir, ang gusto ko lang, sir, ma, ano, sir, we do not just in, uh, focus on the uh, kamalian ng mga nasa firearms or sa... Ano, Para sir, matrace din natin kung sino yung nagpundo niyan sir. Kasi malaking pera sir eh, 52 million. So kung NTA man yan sir, saan sila nakakuha ng pera? Di ba sir? Dapat sir, yun ang tumbukay natin. Kasi sir, malaki yung nawawalang sir. Malaki to sir, 1, 1, 52 million pesos. Saan sila kumukuha sir ng pera? Kaya kailangan sir, we have, we have to dig up sir yung kanyang sir. Yun lang po sir, uh, 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 Your Honor, sir. Yan, dapat na, natumbok na natin yan kung nahuli yung si Lusada. Yeah. Hindi man nahuli si Lusada. Wala naman si Lusada ngayon. Anyway, uh, that's a challenge to the PNP uh, to dig deeper into your investigation para malaman natin kung sino nagpundo nito. Na sinabi nga ni Lusada, galing si NPA ang pera. Anong yun natin NPA? Saan galing yung pera nila? Kung may NPA na magsagot na Kanino galing yung pera? Uh, all we have, all, all uh, that we have right now are uh, pure speculations. Ito ay galing sa mga ganito, galing sa mga ganon. Pero wala talaga. Oh, you, we cannot reduce that into writing. Sana may mahuli tayo na magsabi talaga na galing doon yung pera para matumbok natin. But anyway, uh, meron pag gusto magsalit. Go ahead, uh, sir, uh, Nap General Napistilies. You have the uh, floor, sir. Mr. Chair, Your Honor, maraming salamat po for this opportunity. Ang gusto ko lang pong big, gusto ko pong ihambig yung nangyari sa amin sa LTO. Yung halimbawa po ba ang LTO ay nagbigay ng lisensya sa isang motorsiklo, pagkatapos yung motorsiklo ay ginamit sa hold-up, ano pong kasalanan ng LTO? Di ba dapat po ang may kasalanan yung yung nag-hold up. Pero dito po sa sitwasyon namin, yung pong nag-hold up at saka yung nagbenta, wala pong kaso. So parang napakasakit. Kami lang po ay naglisensya, pero kami lahat ang nagkakaso. Salamat po, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Uh, sana matanong natin ang ombudsman dyan because uh, the case is already with ombudsman and uh, bakit uh, Yung kaso nyo nagpapatuloy, tapos yung sa nagbinta, na-dismiss. Uh, yan ang gusto mong uh, malaman. Uh, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Uh, be... uh, Hindi po napaila ng kaso yung Twin Pines. At bukod po doon ay ginamit siyang testigo against us. Y yun nga, yun nga. Uh, Mr. Topacio, can you react to that? Paano nangyari yun? Uh, Your Honor? If, if you I, may, if you may. Uh, yes. We would like to hear from you. I don't know the details, Your Honor. I am not a lawyer. But uh, all I know is that the case was dismissed against us and for that we are grateful. Maybe to add... In the beginning, we furnished uh, we furnished all the documents we had for the CIDG and the Ombudsman, and we we also testified our two employees in Butuan testified against Mr. Lozada, the one who took the rifles, and two independent security guards from us also testified in the Sandigan Bayan. That it was Mr. Lozada who took delivery of the rifles. We can also furnish this honorable commission a copy of the Ombudsman resolution for your 
examination. Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, anyway, uh, we will uh, communicate with the ombudsman. Uh, we'll uh, inquire from them. The, the, from the policy point of view, kung uh, paano nangyari na ganun, I will, uh, would like to ask an explanation from them. I hope it will not be uh, considered as a subjudice act, huh? subjudicial act na uh, ongoing yung kaso tapos uh, uh, mag-interfere yung uh, Senado sa kanilang uh, ongoing case. But anyway, for purposes of uh, policy uh, considerations, ang aming rason doon. Uh, rule naman niya na Supreme Court na iba yung purpose ng uh, committee hearings, yung congressional inquiry uh, from uh, judicial uh, proceedings. So, from court proceedings. Maraming salamat, sir. Maraming salamat. Any, any, anybody who wants to say something, sir? Before uh, we can... Anyway, I, I just would like to... Siguro alam ninyo ang background nitong... Uh, investigation na ito. Uh, despite the fact na napayal na yung kaso, merong na-dismiss na na kaso, merong ongoing na kaso, still, we conducted this investigation because uh, openly, during the SUNA, it was uh, requested by no less than the President of the Republic of the Philippines to this representation personally to conduct uh, an inquiry on the uh, missing AK-47 rifles. Kaya siguro, uh, maybe, uh, the President was not uh, uh, fully updated uh, on the progress of the cases uh, being filed against the respondents. Kaya siya siguro nagtatanong. So, ginawa ko ito ngayon na mag tayo to comply from the to comply with the directives of the president uh, the, re the re request of a co-equal branch of uh, government yung executive from the president from the chief executive requesting the senate to conduct an inquiry para naman makapag feedback ako sa kanya na progress ng kaso na ito uh, hindi siya hindi siguro niya alam na may mga kaso na na-file uh, but anyway uh, as far as uh, policy issues are concerned, uh, we are uh, in uh, we are in uh, unison when we say that uh, R18591 is enough measure to counter or to stop the this uh, the, the, this uh, kind of issues from uh, uh, happening in the future. So, tama na itong uh, 10591. Mukhang istrikto-istrikto na nga. Uban nga. Eh. Ang iba nga, eh, uh, na, nagagalit na. Dahil dubli-dubli na yung requirements. Sana, from the PNP, o hindi na mangyari ito ulit. Uh, from the Association of Firearms and Ammunition Dealers, eh, sana uh, you also cooperate uh, fully with the authorities para hindi talaga ito mangyari ulit. Uh, as to the merits of the case, I will not delve on that. Kung sinong na-dismiss na kaso, sinong uh, nagpapatuloy, dahil hawak na ng ombudsman yun. So, yun lang po, para makakuhala ko ng update, para maibigay ko kay Pangulong uh, Duterte ang uh, progress ng uh, issue na ito. So, kung mayroon pang gusto magsalita, um, I will give the floor to you dahil uh, yung uh, kabilang uh, hearing ng uh, uh, Blue Ribbon Committee ay naghihintay na rin sa amin doon ni eh, Senator Tolentino Meron na sir? Meron pa kayong uh, meron pang gusto magsalita? So kung wala na uh, I would like to thank everyone Alam ko lalong lalo na itong grupo ni General Menezes na talagang uh, broken hearted sa kanilang serbisyo na matagal nilang pinag pinagalagaan alam kilala ko itong mga tao na ito uh, sila General Nap Estelis kung gaano ka nila pinagalagaan yung kanilang serbisyo 
bandang dulo ay nadiskaril. Masakit yan para sa kanila at sa kanilang pamilya. Nadiskaril dahil dito sa isyo na ito. Uh, minala sila, but uh, sila rin naman nagsasabi na uh, they are willing to face the consequences of their actions being a true gentleman and officer. At si General Magalong naman, he was just uh, doing his uh, mandate as uh, ordered by higher uh, uh, higher authorities to conduct the investigation. So, itong lumabas ngayon. Ombudsman naman, they are doing their part. So, let's, uh, everything, eh, sometimes we can say na uh, all is fair in love. <laughs> Nagpapatawa lang ako, sir, dahil uh, seryoso na masyado si Sir Nap is still yes. Uh, that's all sir, maraming salamat talaga sa inyong mga sa inyong presensya ngayon, sa inyong inputs na naibigay uh, uh, Mr. Tupacio uh, sa iyong uh, uh, contribution para hindi na ito maulit uli sa PNP, General Menezes uh, General Napistilies uh, Mayor Magalong Sir, malamig na ba ngayon dyan sa Baguio? Malamig na? Sarap kumakyat din kayo, no? malamig na. Senator Ronald, akyat ka lang dito. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. NBI, uh, DOJ, uh, all the officers and men andito ngayon. Maraming salamat. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Your Honor. Permission to leave?